Hi, welcome back. This is Joe Rabel. Today, what we're going to do is talk about how to find big reversals using ADX. And I'm going to show it in multiple time frames because we want to know what's happening on the lower time frame. There's something specific that can give us an edge that, that something big could be coming. All right, once we do that, we'll go through the individual stock requests that came through. Okay, so I've got two time frames up. I got a monthly on the left and a weekly on the right of William Sonoma. And uh, what I want to show here is how the ADX, so this blue line is the ADX line, all right? And it's it's a trend indicator. It tells how strong the trend is. Um, MACD can help with whether you're in an uptrend or a downtrend, but the ADX indicator, I think, tells you a lot more about how strong the trend is, or if you're not in a trend at all in your, and you have a low ADX condition, which is when you're below this 25 line for an extended period. And if you notice, we've got uh, both time frames here, the uh, monthly on the left, uh, below 25, starting right about the middle to late part of 2022, and then uh, stayed low until the, uh, you know, three quarters through uh, 2023. But what we're looking for is a condition where we've get low ADX on the high time frame monthly and we have low ADX on the lower time frame as well. All right. Now, there's a couple other things that I really like to look for. Number one, I do like to see this MACD pattern where we were extremely extended above the zero line here to end 2021. And we spent all of this time um, working this MACD line back to zero. All right. Now, so when we have that combination where we're near the zero line after it was extended and it comes all the way back down and we have low ADX. Now, this came down under 20. All right. So once we get into the teens on an ADX basis and we're below both the DI lines, so green DI shows the strength of the buyers, red DI shows the strength of the sellers. When those lines are dropping and kind of coming together, this blue line is going to drop because we don't have any strength in either the buyers or the sellers. So this is where the buyers kind of peaked, right? And the sellers bottomed and then they started coming together. Once that happens, the ADX line is going to start dropping. All right. So now as they stay together here until they start expanding, this line is going to stay low. All right. Now, so that's kind of the backdrop on a bigger picture pattern. I've got a zero line reversal potential developing after it was extended and it's worked. It's kind of worked off the overbought condition. And I have low ADX showing the strength of the selling really wasn't all that strong because we, the red DI never really got above uh, green to any uh, real ex, uh, extent. And the red line never got above 25. Now, on the lower time frame, this is actually really important. We're looking for a situation where these bars are really tight, all right? There's not a lot of, the size of the bars are small, and there's a lot of overlap, all right? And when that happens, what's going to end up showing is all three lines are going to drop down under 25. You see how, so this never happened on the higher time frame, really. Well, it was, yeah, where all three lines were below. It never really happened because green DI stayed above, which is okay because that's the higher time frame. We want to show that there's still an upward bias. But on the low time frame, we want to see all three lines drop down under 25 for an extended period. And that's exactly what took place here. Once that happens and we get all three lines below and you get it in this case, it was uh, what about six months or so. Once you reach a three to four or five month period where ADX is low, you want to start drawing trend lines on price and looking for a reversal. All right. You want to be uh, aggressively looking for some sign of new buying to show up. Now, a lot of times that will be confirmed by the uh, DI line, the green DI crossing above 25. Um, but you can also draw in horizontal trend lines. All right. And if we expand this out, you could um, you could be looking at the potential. In fact, I think was actually a better strategy here is waiting for this this ADX to actually start kicking into gear. You had one pullback here and one of the signals I use is a pinch play on the MACD that happened here. And then this was the second one, which is a lot more obvious 
when we got a pullback to both moving averages that were rising. If you notice, the 18 was rising here, rising here with a 40 underneath and supporting. So both of these were really good opportunities. If you miss the kind of the trend line break entry, you know, coming up right at the beginning as MACD was crossing above the zero line. So again, we can be really aggressively looking for a turn to the upside. And what we should expect when we have two time frames low like this, we should be expecting an explosive move. Now, this is especially uh, impressive what's taking place here. We not, might not necessarily see something that uh, triples in price over the course of, uh, you know, six to nine months. But we should expect strong advancement and we should expect the, in, the uh, trend to turn strong to the upside if it's going to turn up and break out. And this is a way to kind of tell you, and, and I think what I like to do is use this indicator to say, all right, if I've got a choice between 10 different stocks, I'm looking for the ones that have built up all this energy on two time frames. And if I can take that 10 stock list down to two or three that have this dynamic um, energy being built up on the uh, the two time frames using ADX, then I my my odds of finding something that's going to do something explosive to the upside will really increase. All right, let's go ahead and get into the uh, individual symbols now. If you're enjoying the content, hit that like button and also subscribe. My services can be found at rablestockresearch.com. You can also find information about my course uh, that's uh, at this on the services page. So if you have an interest, go ahead and take a look. Okay, so we've got a lot of symbols to go through, a lot of great requests. Uh, keep sending those requests in. It really makes for a great show. Some really nice patterns that I think uh, some people maybe aren't even looking at. Uh, so uh, we'll get into that in a second. Let me just tell you, though, over on the left here, so I wanted to show, I've got five charts up because I like to include the hourly on this uh, uh, video uh, because... Uh, there, we, a lot of times we'll talk about them when we're looking at uh, the indices and a few times we'll get requests re related to swing trading and we want to look at the hourly for that. But over on the left, I've got all these different, these are all different layouts that I have. So if I just want to look at a monthly, weekly side by side and using the bars, I can have it set up that way. Um, if I want to look at my standard uh, four chart setup, I can do that. Uh, I've also got a... Um, one that I use for my subscriber video on Wednesdays that has a lot more detail. I've got six charts up here and I go into a lot of detail for those. Um, so it's just kind of nice to be able to flip back and forth. You can save these out and you have access to them very, very quickly. All right, let's start with the uh, QQQ here. Uh, off to a pretty decent start this morning. Um, we've got a little gap up, you can see, on the hourly here. It's starting to fade a little bit, but it is early in the morning. We haven't even reached 10 o'clock as I'm doing this video right now. What I'm looking for right now, so there's a couple things that I've been talking about. If you've been watching this show for several weeks, we've been getting a little stretched away from both of these moving averages. Now, the momentum on both of these are totally fine. All right, so I'm not necessarily looking for some kind of big reversal, but on the daily chart, we've been losing a lot of momentum based on the ADX and even the MACD, but I like to look at the ADX for this, especially when we fail to get above 25 when price is going to a new high. The problem is, is that we've got, we keep bouncing off of the 40 area here. We're, we're not showing... Um, any break of this line. Now, typically I'll use the 18, but in this case, we came down and found support here. We got pretty close here, and then we bounced off it twice recently, and then again here. So it's a break of the 40 that we're looking for. And I think if we do that, then we probably get a little deeper pullback. Now, what's been going on though, is that instead of um, breaking down or spiking to the upside, we're actually working this MACD off. The, the We're working off the overbought condition by just going sideways. You see how 450 is really important? So if we keep doing this for a little bit longer, you're going to get this MACD down back to here, and we're going to actually have a long enough period where we'd have a new low ADX condition. All right, so we'll have to take that very seriously if it plays out that way. I don't think this has gone long enough to play out that way. Right now, I think if we took off, I'd still be thinking like a climax move. But, you know, if if we go a little bit longer, work sideways, 25 bars, something like that, and we get this going sideways long enough and we get this down close to zero, then you got to think we could be starting another breakout pattern. So something we got to watch. Now, we don't necessarily have to guess on that. One of the things we want to do is use 
Um, move to the upside here if we can hold and turn back to the upside. We're going to need green DI to hold as well. If you notice on the downside move, we did not have that. We didn't get any real signal that showed to the downside. So we knew that wasn't really a signal. So use the hourly for that. All right, let's go to the IWM. Um, still waiting for um, improvement on a relative basis. It hasn't come, but the overall structure looks pretty good. Now, I do want to go back really quickly and mention what's going on on the relative strength. Look at what's going on with the relative strength of the QQQ. We're starting to lose a little bit of strength here. I think this is something we got to really key on, especially as the market kind of pushes sideways and or pushes to the upside. Um, this could be a period where we start to see other areas show some strength. I've been mentioning how the XLB and the XLE are showing some really nice action here. All right, I do have a, a short request, a BIDU, and um, just looking at this as a short. And here's my problem with that as a short. Look at this massive support area here. We've been, tur we turned here back in 2019, 2020. We had a pretty deep reversal in 2022, but here we are again in the same general area. So I don't really like it unless I'm going to be down on a really micro time frame, just trading like very, very quickly for a day or two. Um, I, I see that we're rallying to a declining 18 week. But if the pattern just doesn't, uh, I don't think it just uh, offers enough downside to um, provide any any real good risk reward. I would actually be looking for this to show some strength up through the 18 week with some green DI showing maybe MACD and then look to play the first pullback because of all the support. All right, let's go and look at um, Amgen. So my big problem with Amgen is we've had this big reversal. Look at that big reversal on the monthly. And I think even though there's a massive amount of support underneath here, you, you did damage. Look at the weekly big red bar at the top. So you can almost look at the midpoint of that as being resistance and say, you know, this is not a whole lot of upside uh, starting around 300. Yeah, it could bounce around. I don't think there's a lot of downside to it. I just don't think it's worth I think there's so many other better looking patterns right now that this to me is more like a waste of time. Um, like DXCM. Now, this is a great looking pattern. Look at this, uh, the way this monthly has played out. We've got a big double bottom in MACD. See that? And now we've turned up here. We've got green DI staying in command throughout this whole period. Red DI could never take over. Had a few pops and then it dropped right back down. And in conjunction with that, we have to think that the bias is back to the upside with this big green bar. All right. So that's really attractive. Now, you know, I don't know that I want to play this off the daily. I mean, you could do that. It's just the problem is, is that we're coming right up against this breakout. We haven't broken out yet. If this had taken a broken out and then we were getting this set up right here on the breakout, uh, beyond the breakout, then I love this pattern. Now, I do like the setup on the hourly uh, with the daily overall, but I just have a feeling because we've got some resistance there, it might end up spending a little bit more time consolidating. All right, let's look at TFC. Um, I like some of the action in the banks, but the best banks, the bigger banks, are already made big moves and they're actually overbought. Um, the regionals like this, and this has a little bit too much resistance up at like 39.40 for me to get all that excited, but there are some attractive looking um, uh, regionals that could have a pretty decent trading move and that could help this stock in the short term. I just don't think this is one that I would have all that much interest in. I think you're seeing the chart right though. I mean, I do think this does want to trade a little bit higher, maybe fill in some of this big drop that it had. Um, it could play along, uh, but I just don't think, you know, I, I think there's better stocks in the regional area, regional bank area that I would be more attracted to. All right, look at uh, Wayfair. We're holding the 18-month line as we cup around, and now that line is rising. And you notice the MACD holding its signal line as well. And then now we're back above the 18 on the weekly as well. So we've been kind of, you know, a little bit below it, but now we're above it. So um, some signs of improvement uh, there as well. Now, I did want to point one thing out. So this is a reverse divergence pattern here where we're making a lower low on, on MACD and a higher low here. But we have this overrun pattern that's just developed. So I don't think they erase each other out. This is a lot of strength in ADX. So 
The, the uh, reverse divergence is telling you to have an upward bias. The crossover to the downside that's recent is telling us we're probably going to get something like this. So we can still play to this to the upside. Just recognize that we probably have some kind of a little hitch in the pattern before this is ready to go. All right. Um, OK, let's look at uh, when. Um, now, you know, I like to point these things out because once you get used to seeing these things, I think it can really help. So here's a pinch right at the zero line. You get a pullback and you start to lift off the 18 month line. That's on the monthly. All right. And then we go to the weekly and we have a pinch play right crossing the zero line. So we have a back to back pinch play, uh, which is right out of my book, a two time frame pinch play. And as this is pinching on this time frame, we can go to the daily chart and draw in our trend line for a trigger. And I have four different triggers that's in my course. This would be a trigger one because we had a zero line reversal with low ADX, no real strength in the selling during the declining phase. And then as this is opening up this day, we could be getting long on that entry. That was a very good entry uh, after the two time frame pinch. All right, so go back and study that. Now, I like this pattern. It went up and hit this 110 area to a marginal new high. Probably need a little pullback now for a new entry. Um, so look at the difference. So WYNN held the 18 month. This held the 18 week. Now, let's look at IVZ. Look at the difference here. We're below the 18-month on this pullback, right? Um, and we're below the 18-week on this pullback. You see how we got below it? We didn't hold above it. So it's a little weaker. And when I see that, I sort of assume that this is going to be resistance up here, 117 and a half or something like that. So think about it this way. If we can't hold the 18, then we probably have resistance up here that causes us to consolidate a little bit more. Now, I do think this is a constructive pattern, but, I mean, I don't know that I want to be uh, buying this first curl up to the upside. So wait for strength to show up on the daily chart, and then we can look to buy the next pullback. All right. Now, look at the strength that's developing here. Do you see, do you see the difference here? Look at how this is holding the 18-month here. Right. You see how MACD is above its zero line and then we get a pullback here. It tried to break the 18, but couldn't. And we're now we've got an 18 and 40 both rising. Yeah, this broke down a little bit below the signal line. But look at how we have support of the zero line. All right. We've got good action in the uh, ADX. So this is a really nice looking pattern. What I tell guys when I'm teaching, um, you know, one of the, th you know, one on one, one of the things I really like to look for are smiles. We want to buy the smile, right? We want to look for this type of saucer pattern. This is usually very bullish, especially when it's symmetrical like this. So nice look to it. Um, I do think we maybe need a little bit of a pullback now. Um, but uh, you know what? I mean, this is a pretty nice breakout. I don't have a problem being a buyer in this thing. Um, okay. Not a lot of history in this one. Um, I do think it's going to take a little bit of time just looking at the weekly. We still have a declining weekly. So maybe look for this to push up and then make a higher low. And in that process, maybe we get an ABC pullback on the daily chart, which would be the next setup in this, I think. I don't really see a setup right now. I do like that it's breaking the downtrend line, but I think it's a little early. I'd look for the two to develop after that. Okay, let's look at this one, uh, Cureleaf. I don't, I don't even think I look at this. It's on the pink sheets, but that's okay. Let's just look at the pattern itself. We're above the 18-month, and in fact, we did have a little test of the 18-month on this little dip here. Notice how the MACD is holding its signal line. All right, now look at what the weekly's doing. Same thing. We're getting this kind of a saucer look to it as it cups around, and um, high, we're getting higher low, higher low, higher low. I like the look of that, and then we've got this horizontal here. So we've got an ascending triangle developing with improved ADX. You see how this was based on the sellers? That that blue peak was based on the sellers. We had some improvement in the buyers here and then a lot of improvement in the buyers here. This is looks like it's gathering steam for a breakout pattern. All right. Now look at seven and a half. We probably are going to have some issues up there. We made a peak here, a peak here. So that's kind of the target area for this trade. Um, okay, let's look at the TMUS. Um, we're consolidating here. We've made a pretty nice move to the upside, and then we've consolidated back to the 18-week. Uh, um, the ADX was very strong on this move to the upside. So I like this. I mean, I think this looks pretty decent. I just don't know that it's going to bounce right off the 18-week right now. Remember what we talked about. If we get a crossover here, 
What I typically look for is some kind of a test and come back down. We maybe make it to the 50% of the pullback and then we come back down. And if we can turn back up and kind of make a little W, a double bottom kind of a reversal back to the uh, back up and take out that high, we can uh, we can probably get going again. But this is telling you want to keep an eye on it. The momentum signs are very, very good. Um, and we've broken out and held. And this is a good stock relative to uh, its uh, sector as well. Okay, look at uh, HOPE. So we're showing some signs of life here. We've got a couple nice green bars trying to get back above the 18 month, but it's still declining. This is on the early side. All right. I don't know that it's ready. And one of the things we can do is just draw a horizontal trend line here, put an alarm on this level. Right. And we want the first thing we need is some strength coming up through here. If we have that, I could almost look at this as a weekly daily pattern and I would view it as a trading play because the monthly doesn't look like it's ready to me. So you could play it off the weekly and the daily. This is I know this is overrun, but we've gone up and we've tested. We've done enough work here and it looks like a zero line reversal. OK, so we can play this as a breakout pattern. It's a low ADX condition on the daily. Um. OK, let's look at uh, CVS. So um, I've been talking about this with my uh, institutional clients. I just don't like the look of this. We've got this declining 18 month that it just keeps having problems in the same problem area at 80. And we have the declining 18 month. We've got MACD that's struggling. We don't show any real signs of buyers here. So from a, most times you can look at this the weekly and the daily and say, and say, OK, maybe I can trade it. But here we're right up against the resistance. And until this can get through um, this 80 level with with clarity, like real clarity, then I don't think I, in fact, I would let it break out and then maybe look to buy the next pullback. All right. So it's it's a, way, a little too early for me. Let's wait for it to get through 80 and then see if there's any strength behind it. Um, let me just point out another one of these, this GPS. This was a really nice setup, um, one that was uh, highlighted in my report. So look at the strength of this move, and then we get a pullback. We got an 18 and a 40, both rising at about the same rate. Um, now, we go through our correction phase here, and uh, MACD overruns, so we don't want to play the first move to the upside. We get a pullback, and then as this emerges, and it would you would have been doing it based on the earnings, actually would have caused the trigger to the upside, which was a uh, low ADX pattern, and um, you, you would have basically been taking it as this was climbing back up here. Uh, with this low ADX uh, situation taking place. So notice what happened. I'm going to keep reiterating when I see these things. So we had the cross over here. It doesn't, because this is strong, it doesn't mean we don't take this trade. Now, what we look for is a move up and then a test. You see how it did that? It basically went to the midpoint of the decline and then came back down and tested. And then we take the next move to the upside. All right. These are your requests. I'm not, I'm not bringing these in just to prove a point or anything. This is just happening uh, because that is kind of the nature of the way MACD plays out sometimes. All right. Um, now we've gotten this big move and I think it made a little bit too big of a move and look at how we've got the crossover taking place. So don't be in a big hurry to take the first signal here off the hourly or anything like that. Let this consolidate and it might end up consolidating a little bit deeper after such a big move. Uh, but the bigger picture pattern is improving. I think the next time we get a little closer to the 18 week would probably be a pretty nice uh, entry pattern. OK, I got to keep showing these because these are such great setups. These are literally could be right out of my book. All right. This is a move to the upside. We get decent strength. We get MACD confirming. And then we work our way back to the 18, which is above a rising 40. So rising 18, rising 40. We get our pullback. All right. Now, MACD is this is the first pullback after crossing the zero line. All right. And then um, we go to the um daily chart and we get an opposing trend pattern that's where the 18 crosses down below the 40 and then it's opposite so this is going down while the weekly is going up this is what we want and then we look for the first emergence back to the upside and uh, we see macd confirming and then again we have a low adx condition showing the selling pressure was not that strong so uh, these are all really good things to learn i think if you can learn this one pattern your timing is going to improve dramatically. It's a two time frame pattern, can be in any two time frames. I've done it on a five minute and a one minute, and I've done it on a monthly and a weekly, and everything in between. It happens on a regular basis, uh, something to really uh, be on the lookout for. All right, one more real quickly uh, PATH. Now, when this was sent across, it was still above the 18 week. Now it's kind of crossed down below. 
Uh, we're breaking support. So I don't think there's any rush on this stock. Uh, no big hurry to be playing this. I think there's been a little bit too much weakness right now. Thanks for watching. If you have any stock requests, send them to stocktalk at stockcharts.com. I'll try to get in on the next show. Also, my YouTube channel is called Invest Like a Pro. Uh, have a great week and we'll see you next time.